All right. Hey, everyone. Um, so good to be with you all tonight. Um, welcome to tonight's webinar, Keeping Georgia Covered. Uh, my name is Moses. I use the pronouns he, him, his, and I am with the Georgia Poor People's Campaign. And we're just really excited uh, to have you all on tonight for this important webinar as we as a community prepare ourselves and each other for the upcoming Medicaid cutoffs in April. Um, I'll start a little bit by just talking very briefly about what the Poor People's Campaign is. I could talk a long time about it, but I only have like five minutes. <laughs> um, but the Poor People's Campaign is a moral fusion nationwide movement made up of state coordinating committees um, from across the country, including a coordinating committee right here in Georgia. You're going to meet some of our leaders tonight. Um, this is Jamal, one of our tri-chairs. You'll hear from Neil a little bit later. Um, but we are rooted in Reverend Dr. King's 1968 Poor People's Campaign, um, which was a struggle that sought to bring uh, poor leaders from across the country together into a shared struggle to not only really shift the narrative, but also enact real concrete change. The new Poor People's Campaign uh, really draws on this history and also the history of a lot of other movements for justice. Um, and we are committed to fighting the interlocking injustices of poverty, systemic racism, the war economy and militarism, economic devastation, the distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism, and the denial of access to good health care. Um, we are building here in Georgia, just as we are across the country. And so you'll probably hear this a lot tonight, but if you are interested in joining with us, if you are interested in a moral fusion, you know, organizing, if you feel called to this, if you're just curious about this, if you are, you know, angry and you want to do something about it, um, and you're on this call tonight, you are the leader that we need right now, um, not that we want, that we need. Um, and so we would love if you got involved with the Poor People's Campaign. You can do that by either reaching out to Georgia at poorpeoplescampaign.org. To get more involved, you can message one of us in the chat. Um, I'm sure we'll probably be saying this a lot tonight. Um, but I won't be taking up too much more of the time. We have a really powerful and informative night tonight and also pretty packed. And so I'm just going to kind of go over a brief overview of what tonight will look like. Um, and so Tonight, we're gonna to hear from Georgians for a Healthy Future, Georgia Budget and Policy Institute, and of course, the Poor People's Campaign. Um, we're gonna start off uh, with some framing about the background of the Medicaid uh, cutoffs and who it will affect. And then we'll go into how grassroots organizations can support families and consumers. And then we'll hear a personal impact story. From there, we'll go out to breakout groups for about 20 minutes before we come out and do a brief share out before we close out with some closing remarks and of course, a call to action. Action. Uh, please know that if you are joining us on Facebook Live, this webinar will end after the personal impact story because on the Zoom line, we'll be going into uh, breakout groups. And so there will be nothing on <laughs> the webinar on Facebook Live. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but I won't take too much more of the time. Jamo, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, but um, otherwise, I think we're ready to hop in. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you all both so much. And I will introduce myself. You'll be hearing from me between sections tonight. I'm Erin Robinson, Director of Outreach and Strategic Campaigns at the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute. So next, we're going to hear from Georgians for a Healthy Future, and they'll be telling us a little bit about the background on the Medicaid and winding, as well as what consumers and communities can do <clears throat> to be prepared. So we're going to go ahead and um, pull up the PowerPoint slides. So please just give me a moment. All right, so I will throw it over to Kanetta Atkins at Georgians for a Healthy Future, as well as Deanna Williams, and I will get us to full screen. Thanks, Erin. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Kanetta Atkins. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the organizing manager um, for Georgians for a Healthy Future. And just a little bit of background about GHF before I get into the slides. Um, we are a consumer um, a consumer advocacy and health policy organization um, that does work all across the state of Georgia. And we um, collaborate with communities and organizations like Georgia's Poor, People Camp Poor People's Campaign and GBPI um, to really lead policy change that advances health equity for all Georgians. And so uh, we're very happy to be here this evening and um, share a little bit more about this Medicaid unwinding and the Medicaid renewal process. Um, but like most things that we talk about, we want to make sure that we give an understanding of how we got here. 
Um, and why is this conversation um, necessary to be having? So if we could go back, pop back to the last slide um, and I can give just a little bit more of a background, but um, essentially most everyone um, has access to some form of health coverage, either through their job, um, which is job-based insurance, um, individual insurance, which is done through healthcare.gov, um, or public insurance, such as Medicare for the elderly, um, TRICARE, which is for veterans, uh, Peach Care for kids, and Medicaid. And the last two are two that are uh, really going to be the focus of this evening's conversation. Um, so in March of 2020, um, when Congress passed the um, Congress passed a bill. I'm going to try to explain this in the simplest language as possible because I believe that language is a very important um, way to overcome health barriers. But um, during the pandemic, um, the federal government declared a public health emergency. And it really changed the rules um, to make it easier for people to keep their Medicaid coverage. Again, Medicaid is a type of public health insurance that is mostly for very low income and for people um, across the country. And so they did this because so many people were losing jobs and becoming uninsured as a result of the virus. And so, uh, but those pandemic rules um, will essentially be ending soon. So what you're seeing on your screen is um, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act uh, was passed in March of 2020. And many of those laws provisions were linked to the end of the public health emergency. Um, but many of us did not expect the pandemic to last for three years, um, but here we are. <laughs> so um, what essentially is gonna happen starting April 1st, and I'm not gonna go into all the details of this because many of us on the call are, are going to be sharing, but um, many of those rules in that law are gonna soon be changing starting on April 1st, 2023. So it's expected that um, thousands of people within the state of Georgia, including uh, mostly children, uh, are gonna lose their Medicaid or peach care coverage uh, when they try to re-enroll. Um, so one of the ways that we wanna make sure that folks are um, aware of some ways that they can remain covered so they won't experience a gap or a lapse in coverage um, is really updating their contact information and staying um, as proactive as possible to ensure that they can maintain their coverage um, once April 1st um, comes around, which is very, very soon. So who is gonna be going through the Medicaid unwinding? All Georgia Medicaid members. So that includes all children, including those who have aged out of Medicaid since March of 2020. All previously pregnant people. So if someone got pregnant um, in March of 2020, they have been enrolled in their Medicaid coverage since their pregnancy. Um, and all parents and some seniors um, and people with disabilities, those who do not have um, SSDI benefits. So all mostly just about 2.7 million folks will have to go through the Medicaid renewal process. So that's a lot of Georgians and that's a lot of kids um, that we that the state is gonna have to make sure um, they review their paperwork and all of the procedural things that are required. So I'm gonna um, pause and pass it over to Deanna Williams um, to intro herself and then share a little bit more about what you can do to maintain your coverage. Thank you, Kanetta. Um, my name is Deanna Williams, and I'm a health insurance navigator with Georgians for a Healthy Future. And today I'm just going to give you some tips on how to make sure your information is updated in the Georgia Gateway system. On the screen, you will see the Georgia Gateway web portal. And this is where you have online access to all the assistance programs here in Georgia that you where you can apply for benefits, renew your benefits, and upload documents and report your change. That website is gateway.ga.gov slash access for those who may be calling in. Next slide. So if you are new to Gateway, you have, um, if you're new to Gateway and you need access to your account online, once you go to the homepage, you'll see an option to create an account. For those of you who are already familiar with the Gateway on portal online, you will have the uh, option to manage or log into your account. You can go to the next slide. 
once you select or create an account or choose to log in, you will be greeted by the login. This is where you would need to make sure you have your user ID and password. And please make sure you keep this information for you so you'll have access to your correspondence and notices and be able to update and change your information. Next slide. After logging in, um, you will you will be greeted by a confidentiality, a confidentiality agreement. And that's just letting them know that you accept the confidentiality and acceptable use and other privacy policies that's mandated by the state of Georgia. But after you accept that agreement, then you'll be brought to the benefit summary page. And this is a page displayed on the screen that shows you information on your case, as well as the benefits that you're receiving. On this page, it will include your case number, your who's head of household on the application, if you have any upcoming scheduled appointments, as well as any notices and pending verifications if you need to turn anything in. Below that section, you'll see my benefits. My benefits is saying what type of benefits you're currently receiving, whether you're receiving medical assistance, SNAP, which is also known as food assistance, TANF, or other state programs. They will show here and next to it will let you know the status of that benefit, if it has been approved or denied. And it does give you additional details for your case along with it. The next slide. So right up under manage account, when you're logged in, you will see um, four other options. Right in the very front is report my changes, as well as case closure, upload documents, and apply for benefits. On, the, on this page, you will select report my change to update your contact information. Next slide. When you select report my change, there's going to bring a whole list of changes that you can report in Gateway. So this is where you would need to select the box for all the changes that you want to report. For the Medicaid unwinding, you do want to make sure that your address, email, or phone number, if it has changed, it can be updated at this point. And I also want to make it aware for those who may be assisting someone with the application or helping them with their renewal. You'll see also in the, in the bottom, the last one is to change your authorized representative. You have the option to select that if you need to add a new authorized representative, if you need to end someone who is an authorized representative, or if you need to change them. That would give the option to add that person or remove anyone who may be previously listed. Next slide. Once you select to, um, the, to report that change, it'll bring you to the information about you section. On this page, on the right-hand side of the page, they're gonna show the information that they already have on file. On the left side of the page, you'll see boxes where you can change, add, or remove information and how to contact you. In the first page, you'll see where it's listing your address and then you click the next slide for me, Erin. And that will show your phone number and email. And this is also when you can let them know what's the best time to contact you. And if nothing has changed, you should leave these answers in the box the way that it is. The right side of the page won't change until an agency gets and process your change. So just keep that in mind. But let them know if that date, if it was from March 1st, you need to just let them know what date that this change occurred so they can make sure that you get your correspondence to the right address or be contacted at the right phone number. Next page, please. Once the information has been updated and sub sub submitted, you receive a congratulations screen. This page is gonna say that your, um, your change has been submitted successfully and it'll display a tracking number. Please print and save this page for your records. Um, and if they do ask or if you report any changes, you are encouraged to upload documents if it's, if it's a change that affects your proof of identity, income, and expenses. Next slide. Once, you, once your um, renewal has been completed, you will receive a notice through the mail, or you'll be able to see your notice in Georgia Gateway Portal. Next slide. Now on this screen, this is a screen a display of someone who completed an application, but you will get a renewal notice very similar. The renewal notice will have notice of decision and it'll be addressed to the person who completed the application. And you'll also see at the top of these notices, it'll tell you who's your caseworker, the worker ID and, a, and their phone number, just in case you have any issues. But under, um, 
<clears throat> I'm sorry, the correspondence will come via mail or email depending on the form of delivery that you have set for your account. This is a six page notice giving a description of the benefits you apply for if you are approved and the benefit period for when the coverage will start. Next slide, please. The last page of your correspondence is going to be your fair hearing notice. If you were denied or you feel you were denied in error, you do have the right to file a fair hearing and they and you will complete this form and return it. If you have any issues returning this form, you can give them a call, but you will still need to complete the form in writing and contact the agency to let them know you would like to file a fair hearing. Next slide. So for those who may be denied or may lose coverage due to the PHE unwinding, you still may have option to get health insurance. Due to you losing coverage with Medicaid, you will meet the requirement for a special enrollment period. And that'll give you the option to get a plan on the ACA marketplace. And you can go to that site at healthcare.gov. And if you have any issues with finding a plan or getting help looking at plans, you can select find local help that's going to be located at the bottom right corner. And it'll once you enter your zip code, it'll show you all the navigators and assisters that are available in your area to provide this assistance for you. Now, as the PHG is unwinding, I'm sorry, as the PHG is unwinding, I just want to let those know who are preparing for their renewal. Um, when you're getting prepared for your renewal, please just make sure you keep your documents. Whether you are renewing your benefits or appealing a case, make notes of any and all documents you send about your account and be sure to note the time, date, and the name of the person you gave them to for your records. When you complete a renewal, you have the option to complete the renewal online, email, by phone, or in person. But for those who may be in smaller counties, please check with your local defects office for the days that they are open as well as the times if you need assistance. The information you need to gather is proof of citizenship for any new members of your household, the most recent pay stubs for anyone who works, proof of any income you receive other than by working, and if you stop working, proof that your job has ended. But if you do need assistance, please reach out to the navigators. We are here to help as well as their local defects office. Thank you, and I'll pass it back to you, Erin. Thank you so much for all of that information, Deanna. Um, now we there will be um, time when we go into breakouts and we will have room for questions during this call for those who are joining us via Zoom. Um, but right now we're going to take a moment to throw it over to Leah Chan from GBPI and Reverend Neil Tellier from the Georgia Poor People's Campaign to talk about how grassroots orgs can advocate for change. Yeah, thank you so much, Erin. <clears throat> so we heard from Kanetta about what the one Medicaid unwinding is. And we heard from Deanna about the online gateway system and how grassroots organizations can provide direct support to Georgians going through the Medicaid unwinding as they update their information in the gateway system and if denied coverage can transition to the marketplace. Now let's talk about how grassroots organizations can advocate for change. So starting April 1st, our state will have about a year to redetermine the eligibility of all 2.7 million Georgians who are currently covered by Medicaid or Peach Care. We know that this so-called Medicaid unwinding will put enormous pressure on our state agencies and our healthcare system. About 545,000 Georgians are at risk of losing coverage. Almost half of those will lose coverage not because they are no longer eligible, but because of potentially avoidable administrative issues like the form gets sent to the wrong address. We know that children and communities of color will be disproportionately harmed by coverage losses during the unwinding, and that rural and safety net hospitals that have been temporarily propped up by pandemic era federal funding will again feel that mounting financial strain of uncompensated care. So what does this mean for Georgians? It means parents saddled with crushing medical debt when their kid has an asthma attack and they leave the emergency room with a bill that they can't pay. It means teenagers struggling with suicidal ideation, not able to access the treatment they need. And it means potentially more hospital closures devastating the local economies in rural Georgia. But we do not have to accept this harm as the status quo. 
we can move to a more abundant future where everyone has what they need to thrive, including access to high quality, affordable healthcare. So how do we get there? One way is through full Medicaid expansion. We need to stand up and demand that our governor and state legislature fully expand and make healthcare accessible to all Georgians. Medicaid expansion is a good deal for Georgia. Thanks to financial incentives offered under both the, Amer the Affordable Care Act and the American Rescue Plan, fully expanding Medicaid could bring billions in federal funding, millions in increased state and local tax revenues, and tens of thousands of new jobs to Georgia. We also know that fully expanding Medicaid could prevent Georgians from becoming uninsured during the Medicaid unwinding. Mothers who are past their one year of um, postpartum Medicaid coverage and young adults who turn 19, 20, or 21 during the pandemic and are aging out of Medicaid and peach care are a couple of the, the groups who are at most risk of um, being deemed ineligible and potentially falling into the coverage gap during the Medicaid unwinding. Rather than spending time and taxpayer dollars kicking hundreds of thousands of deserving Georgians off their health care, Medicaid expansion lessens the harm of the unwinding while also drawing down enough federal funding to offset the state cost of expansion for at least the first two years. So over the next year, we hope that um, you'll activate your membership and your community around the impact of the Medicaid unwinding and the need to fully expand Medicaid through teach-ins, press conferences, rallies, letter campaigns, or town halls with state lawmakers. Together, we can advocate for full Medicaid expansion so that all Georgians can get the care that they need. And with that, I will pass it over to Reverend Neal. All right, so I've just been sitting here listening, getting all this great information. Um, but here's the thing, uh, Medicaid unwinding is a very tricky term because it sounds like they're trying to do something nice for everybody, when in fact what they're doing is throwing a bomb into families' lives. Um, it looks, the Kaiser Family Foundation estimates that there are 269,000 people in Georgia who are in the Medicaid coverage gap which means their household incomes are below the poverty level, so they're not eligible for the subsidies in the exchange, and yet they're not eligible for Medicaid under the state's current rules. But the state of, in the state of Georgia has this great program that they're starting called Pathways, um, and they, but we're only expected about 50,000 people to jump on that program because of all the expectations that they're placing on the people, like work and um, the fees that come with it. But in general, it's expected that the majority of the people currently in the coverage gap won't comply with the premiums and or the work requirements and administrative reporting that comes with these programs. Um, so what can we do as individuals and advocates? We can make the invisible visible. We can give them a voice. We can live from the bottom. Um, we can do that by growing our political independence and holding all the power holders accountable. Um, Medicaid expansion starts with the state. We need to, as as Leah spoke, we need to get to our state representatives and we need to put their feet to the fire. We need to let them know that we want expanded Medicaid here in the state. We would love Medicaid for all here in the state. How about that? Let's be the first state to do that. Um, we can do know your rights trainings that spread the word about cutoffs. Uh, we can orient people to the toolkit, which is available now. Um, and I believe somebody will put that in the in the chat um, and the appeal process and invite them to join the fight. Um, I, I believe I may have been so excited to just jump in here. I'm, I'm a member of the Georgia Poor People's Campaign um, as a, I'm a tri-chair. Um, I am also a uh, coordinating council member of the uh, Nonviolent Medicaid Army. Um, and uh, these are, are this, may not, this is gonna be our main focus for the next 14 months. Um, and these Know Your Rights trainings are, are gonna be beneficial. As Leah said, you, you're looking at 547,000 people at, at roughly 39,000 people a month. Um, if, we can, if we can speak to a fraction of that every month, 
Uh, these sessions can be hosted by strategic partners that you have, um, including food banks, churches, faith communities, and other organizations. Um, you can use your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can use TikTok for those of you that are very talented with that. Um, promotions and graphics to educate and agitate about the cutoffs and invite people to join the fight. Um, these could potentially be targeted at areas where there are physical courts, as well as where folks on Medicaid are concentrated in our regions. And we know that we have some very poor, poor regions here in the state where, where we can target specifically to speak to individuals. Um, projects of survival, organize an event where you are out in your community sharing this information on, on, on old school paper and doing one-on-one -on -one face to face interactions with individuals. You can take blood pressures and put it on a form with numbers that scare them and let them know that this is a scary situation. You can do storyboards um, where people can share their stories about Medicaid, um, which is another example down below. You can document people's stories um, on video, um, in Word. Um, you can have actions or call-in days at the governor's office, at the state official's office. Um, these state officials have offices. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that. Um, and that they're actually supposed to be there even though they never go there. Um, you can go to the DFAS buildings and hold sit-ins for longer hours for those that are open short hours. Um, and we can do this in partnership together. Um, you can do it with just your team. Um, and, and as we're doing this, pan for gold and identify those leaders so that way um, as, as we're building, as you're building this community, um, utilize those that are going through the struggle to lead the struggle because they're gonna be the best ones to lead. Um, and that's, that's what we're looking for in the Poor People's Campaign is, is, is I, 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 hey, I'd be happy if somebody with, 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 with the story would love to lead in the Georgia Poor People's Campaign and, and take my space, please come and take my place and I will support you and follow you into the flames of the fire of, of this Medicaid cutoff fight. This is, it's a ridiculous thing that we're going through. Um, they have shown us that they can do it. So why not do it? And with that, I will sign off. That was the perfect transition, Reverend Neal. You talked about someone with a story. Um, so we really wanna take these next five minutes and hear from Zandria Armstrong about the, the story. Zan, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. I am Alexandra Armstrong, um, a mother of two. I have an 11-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son. Um, I was already on Medicaid um, right before the pandemic started, but I was definitely a little concerned about what my, what, what my medical situation was going to be like. So it was definitely a relief to know that my Medicaid, because um, my both of my children and I both have Peach State Health Plan. So um, just having this service, just over the last two weeks, um, my children got the renal virus, they got strep throat, they got pink eye, you know, and this was something that brought, just came throughout the whole house, being able to have Peach State, being able to have just health insurance. I, um, I was able to reach out to ask a nurse and she was able to give me plenty of advice. She was able to let me know that within the Medicaid, Peach State had um, something set up with CVS. And if I didn't have any money for Motrin, if I didn't have any money for vitamins, go on this. They have this stuff set up so that you can go straight to the CVS and get these things that you need for your family and your children. The fact is I didn't have the money for, for Motrin at the time. So it was such a relief that I was able to go and use these services and use this money set up. It's really, really scary to think that there are going to be families out there that don't have any health care at all. I mean, my children got sick. I got sick. It's, it's, it's needed so that we can continue to be productive members um, of the family. I think it's going to be very important for all of us to get um, the word out and let people know that this is going on, that we need to go and reapply. I thought that was so great. I learned so much when she just gave me the whole um, how to go on. I do remember going on and checking um, to see what my benefits were. What I didn't know was that the caseworker and everything was right there in the corner. I received those paperwork, but I didn't know that. So thank you so much for that information. So now if something comes up, I actually know who my caseworker is and I know 
who to reach out to. That was something I didn't know. So I would, I would continue to ask people to educate us. Let us know what's going on. Let us know where we can go. And um, and and definitely, um, let's let's try to keep this going. Um, I think that's about it. If you have any more questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story and the importance of Medicaid to your family. You're welcome. For everyone who is joining us on the live stream, um, this will be the end of that part of the program. So if you're here on Zoom, you can stay here and uh, join some breakout groups with us to talk a little bit, um, ask and answer some questions. Um, we'd love to talk to you in some of these groups about what you think you can do, um, what you've learned here, what you want state leaders to know about um, your community when it comes to Medicaid unwinding. Uh, but for those of you on Facebook Live, the stream will end in just a moment. But um, if you want to make sure that you get the toolkit that we'll send out after this event, you can go ahead and register for this event at bit.ly slash med unwind. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash M-E-D-U-N-W-I-N-D. And if you register for this event, you will be on the email list and able to get the toolkit uh, that we share out following this conversation. So we're going to go ahead and end the live stream. And for those of you in the Zoom, um, we'll be in a moment, we'll be breaking into uh, some breakout groups to kind of talk through what we heard here tonight um, and answer and ask some questions. But um, I did just want to let people know that I'm going to drop in the chat the link to a Jamboard. And I don't know if everyone is familiar, but um, Jamboards just are like post-its online. So they just help you share your thoughts a little bit. Um, so if you're interested, please feel free to write your answers to some of the questions that we'll walk through um, in that Jamboard. And then we'll come back after a few minutes in breakout rooms and share with the full group before our closing. Well, welcome back to the main room, everyone. Um, we're going to do a quick share out from our groups, one to two minutes per group, just on what you heard, anything you learned, anything you're planning to do when you leave here. Um, so, Reverend Neil, do you want to start with anything y'all heard in your group or that you talked about, a highlight? Yeah, actually, we had a, a, a great recommendation um, and, and a, that I think would probably be in Georgia for a Healthy Futures wheelhouse is um, a flyer that has a very easy to follow um, Medicaid sign up, kind of like the pictures that you had, but on a flyer form of whether they're signed up for Medicaid and how they sign up for Medicaid that they could use for presentation at uh, you know, food banks and stuff like that, or an easy flyer that they could hand out. Um, something like that for the more elderly that aren't capable of getting online. Um, I, I, so, um, or aren't, aren't that capable to sit in a group and, and, and learn quickly as everybody's going by so fast. Um, and so I thought that was a really good idea. Um, as well as getting into digital print, which is something I meant to talk about, but forgot to talk about is also, that's how we can get involved is as, as partners is get, get, get this out into digital print. Awesome. Thank y'all so much for, for adding those ideas for, think, for ways we can get the word out. Cause I think we're really gonna be thinking about different ways to reach Georgians over the next 14 months. Um, Leah, did you have anything you wanted to share from your group? Um, <clears throat> Moses was our great scribe. So Moses, I don't know if you wanted to share one of, one of the ideas that you jotted down. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I think a big one, I mean, one thing that kept coming up was just like the need for education and the need to really find ways to be in communities and to like, let folks know about this. And so, um, Dorothy was mentioning, like talking about, we were especially thinking about, um, places where internet internet access might be hard um thinking about like partnering with like local libraries or even if students have chromebooks at schools and stuff like that how can you get this information out in schools how can you get this information out in communities and just find ways to like um build um build those connections where folks will be so that was one of many great ideas <laughs> 
Awesome. Thanks, Moses. Um, Kaneta or Deanna, did y'all have any big ideas you wanted to share with the group or things you heard that you wanted to highlight? Um, I would definitely say Jamil had a great idea when she said reaching out to the doctor's office, because of course, when people lose Medicaid, the doctors won't get paid and they're losing clients. And of course, clients are not getting help. So they should be definitely concerned. So reaching out to them to make sure that their clients have Medicaid before they come to their appointment, which is when most people find out their Medicaid has been deactivated when they're there trying to get service. So reaching out to the medical providers was a big thing, which we think would be great. Along with, if to piggyback off that, I would definitely say pushing other medical providers to accept Medicaid. Because they, if they had access to Medicare, they'll be able to use their Medicaid to the fullest. A lot of people in rural counties and smaller counties have to drive 30 to 30 minutes to an hour away to go see a doctor or go see a dentist on their Medicaid. So if we had more providers willing to accept Medicaid, that would definitely help as well. Yeah, these are these are great ideas wonderful ways to get to get the word out and to make sure people know before they get to the doctor's office, which is such a good point and an important one. And I would also say as well, Erin, um, and this is something that Leah's talked about and also Reverend Neal, but, and Deanna mentioned it in our breakout is, you know, we can advocate to change some of those eligibility requirements for Medicaid um, because so many people might lose their health coverage. And when that happens, that hurts everyone in our state. Um, and it can be really damaging to our local economy. And, you know, it really leads to sicker communities. And so um, really contacting your legislator and your state representative, um, your state senator, and letting them know that, you know, there's financial incentives available that will help raise the state's income um, requirements and then really expand the Medicaid program so more people can qualify for their coverage gap because the more people that lose insurance um, through this renewal process will fall into that coverage gap um, and we have some work to do as advocates um, to try to change that so you do you can reach out to your lawmaker um, and representative and, and contact them about expanding the Medicaid program so that's always a good ask. <laughs> That's a great point, Kaneta. They have a lot of responsibility and they should use it well to serve Georgians. <laughs> um, all right, so we are coming to the end of our conversation tonight. Um, and I wanted to just move us to some closing remarks and call to action. What are some next steps? What resources will you see following this call? So I'll turn it over to Reverend Neal first. Well, I just want to thank everybody that came. I want to thank for all the th be thankful for all the presenters. Um, um, just uh, know that this is going to be hard work. Uh, it's going to be arduous work, but it can it can be done um, as long as we band together and work from the bottom. Everybody rises. Thanks, Reverend Neal. Um, and the last thing I'll say is um, thank you so much for coming. And as we you heard us mention throughout the call, we've worked together, the organizations that organized this webinar, Georgians for a Healthy Future, um, the Georgia Poor People's Campaign and the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute have put together a toolkit to support you in um, helping others understand what Medicaid unwinding is in spreading the word. So I just dropped a link in the chat. It's gbpi.org slash med unwind toolkit. Um, and so you should be able to visit to visit that link and find the toolkit. We will also email it out to you tomorrow. Um, so you'll, and please feel free to share that toolkit far and wide. Um, the organizations here will update it as we have new information, as we think about some of the stuff we've heard here tonight and wanna to make sure you have access to more resources. So we'll do our best to stay in touch, uh, to make sure you have the support you need to advocate, to make sure that everyone can stay stay covered and those who may lose their coverage can be connected to coverage. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. We look forward to staying in touch with all of you about this and wish you a lovely rest of your evening. Thanks so much for joining us today.